Greetings and trust that you are gearing up for Christmas Day as we draw closer to that wonderful day when all over the world, God's people remember what took place 2,000 years ago. And of course, we remember Christ coming into this world throughout the year. We celebrate what he did for us through his birth and life and death and resurrection and ascension. But it's nice that at this time of the year, everyone turns their attention towards the birth of Christ and celebrates and worships Jesus for that. Today, as we continue looking at this whole sequence of God becoming a man, we want to point us to another aspect of this whole journey, that of Christ's sinless perfection. Hebrews 4 and verse 15 tells us, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So as Christ walked on the earth, the Bible is very clear that he lived a life without sin, sinless perfection. And that was absolutely important. If Christ had committed even one sin, he would be disqualified from being the Savior because then he would have to pay for his own sin and the wages of sin is death. But this life of sinless perfection qualified him to then go on the cross and be the substitute for the sins of the whole world. Now, this is what puts Christ apart from any other person because there is no one else, no other man or woman who's lived on the earth with sinless perfection. And Christ could do that. He was God who became a man. He was God walking in humanity, deity walking in humanity. And he lived a sinless life. Now, of course, walking on the earth, the Bible says he was tempted in all ways, in all points, just like we are tempted and yet he was without sin. He was in perfect obedience and lived a perfectly sinless life before God. And that alone, and that qualified him to be the only one, the only one who could substitute or be our substitute, die for our sake on the cross. And we need to worship Jesus for that. And now the Bible tells us that while he walked the earth, he experienced the suffering of sin, meaning he knew what it was to be tempted. And so he can identify it when we are tempted. He understands that. And yet he empowers us today to overcome sin in the same way that he overcame sin as he walked the earth. So not only did he pay for our sins, but he empowers us to overcome sin as we journey through life. Let's worship Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We recognize your sinless perfection, Lord. And when you walked the earth, you were tempted in all points and yet without sin. So, Lord, you became our substitute. You were able to die for our sins and pay for them on the cross. And here you are today, Lord, empowering us, enabling us to overcome sin. You understand what we feel, but you also give us enough and more strength. We worship you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.